Hey guys, in this video, I'll be reviewing the new Percept 100D from Yonex, comparing it to the Percept 100, the E-Zone, and the Vcore 98. The Percept update from the Vcore Pro, which is mainly an update to the composition or the layup of the materials that are changed, which will then mostly have an effect on the feel, stiffness, and in some cases, stability. This is whilst all other variables remain relatively unchanged. For racket enthusiasts, this might be a welcome change and exactly what you might have wanted from the previous generation to approve upon without changing the racket in its entirety. But for others who just want a quality racket, it won't be worth prices that frames are starting to go for in today's inflated economy and you'll be just much better getting the other models for a nice discounted price instead. So with this in mind, the hundreds were more intriguing to try for the Percept range this time around because they are lesser reviewed models, but now is starting to get some attention because of the new 100D model. I have briefly hit with the older 100s going back to the 2017, 2019 and 2021 version so I feel that I have a relative idea to draw comparisons upon. Before we begin, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up to help with the algorithm, subscribe for more reviews, follow me on Instagram and you can support the channel by buying me a coffee or giving me a super thanks. Let's quickly move on to the specs. The racket comes in 100 square inches. It's 305 grams unstrung with strings added around 323 grams strung. The beam width is 23 millimeters throughout the racket and is a bit more of a squared off shape with a balance of 32.5 centimeters or 6 points headlight. The stiffness rating is 66 RA stiffness. The average swing weight comes in around 318. In this case with the 100D, what makes it a little bit different to the 100 model is that there's an additional five grams to the static weight and stock form, but mostly that it has this unique 18, 19 string pattern, which normally I found in the past for other rackets finds a nice balance between spin and control. For string setups and modifications, I tried three different gauges, a comfortably firm poly in poly tool rev at 1.2 millimeters, a thin poly with vocal cyclone at 1.15 millimeters, a poly poly hybrid with tier one fire wire and head links touch at 1.25 millimeters, and a full bed of poly tool pro black at 1.25 millimeters. For modifications, I simply tried a leather grip only for extra handle weight, a leather grip and added tungsten putty for even more of a headlight balance, and a leather grip and 3 grams of tungsten tape total at 12 o'clock for increasing the overall swing weight. You can check the specs in the overlay. Starting with feel and stiffness, at 66 RS stiffness the racket is firm but I don't think it's that stiff, although off centering can provide a bit of harsh shock due to the size of the sweet spot. Upon impact the hoop of the racket will stay solid but the string bed will give in a little bit which will provide you with a more connected feel compared to the previous 2021 version where the stiffness was about 3 points lower at 63 RA but had much more flex in the upper hoop of the racket where the racket had too much of a bending sensation resulting in what I felt was a bit more of a disconnected feel. In my opinion for the 100D, too soft of a string ends up muting the racket too much making it feel too mushy because I think it doubles up on the dampening technologies that Yonex already used to build the racket with though the actual plushness of the racket does feel quite nice on the arm when you hit clean. If I were to compare the feel of the racket to another frame it kind of sits between the Speed and the Pure Strike Gen 3 16x19 where it provides you with a fine balance between a direct and crisp feel but a relatively plush response that cups the ball just enough giving you enough ball pocketing without feeling like it's too delayed. Overall, I think this is an improvement to the feel for the Vcore Pro series and probably the biggest improvement overall to the entire product line in general. I normally play with soft polys, but for the 100D, I think you need a bit of a mix. If you go too soft where the strings are too malleable, that's when you really expose the muted feel of the racket. Poly Tour Rev felt nice once it breaks in more and loses tension a bit, but you can maintain plenty of control. But for sensitive arms, might be a little bit too much. So I'd mix up the strings and try to get the best of both worlds, where I would use my main string as a bit of a firmer poly that's aggressively shaped and also a softer cross like head links touch, where it provided a softer feel and a little bit of enhanced ball pocketing. The main string was able to maintain the crisp reaction off the string bed, where I could maintain the confidence in the feel where the headlings touch made sure that I was getting the comfort that I needed. For power, the 100D has some wicked flattening capabilities. You can get a very linear trajectory. Where the 100D excels the most is that on flat shots, they are quite skiddy and penetrating and also increasing the swing weight by just a little bit. You can really help with the plow through and penetration with that added weight. 
What the 100D does differently to the Percept 100, the Vcore 98 and the Ezo 98 is that you can maintain a high level of consistency when ripping through the ball thanks to that 1819 pattern. Although it does have access to power, it's a lot more self-generated than the Vcore and the E-Zone where the Percept 100 is a bit more of a fairer comparison as the Percept 100 does offer a noticeable jump in free power in stock form. But when you add that weight to the 100D, you can really pound the ball through the court. The extra bump up in stiffness and how the hoop now stays solid on contact will give you a noticeable increase in power potential compared to the previous generations at max acceleration because that energy transfer is no longer lost in the flexing of the racket but now directly concentrated into the ball instead. Compared to the Vcore 98, some people might feel that the power could be a little bit too much to handle sometimes, losing control, and I can see why people might feel like that but personally I think in the right hands it is tameable and super deadly. And then compared to the E-Zone 98, I think the E-Zone is probably the most difficult to reliably hit flat over and over again because I always found it favoured spin primarily with the flattening as a secondary capability where you would have to be a bit more selective of when to inject that pace. Comparable rackets for power I think would be the Radical MP, the Gravity Tour. It has more than the Speed Pro noticeably but slightly less than the Speed MP. The difference is that it has way more control. For maneuverability, this is where I struggled the most on my forehand to begin with, but not so much on my backhand. The 100D, the way it's shaped, the beam thickness and the forgiveness levels are more suited to what I think is more of a traditional style swing, or at least one that makes very flush contact with the ball, in other words, a flatter play style. Typically, it's no longer the way I play now, but I can adapt quite well, so I adjusted my swing path and played a lot flatter than I normally would these days. In my opinion, the 100D being a boxy shape and a thick one at that at 23 millimeters would optimally, that being the key word, favor a big and full swing, less of an extreme grip to maximize flat shots, but this is where at least I tend to think it would yield better results. For people who have a similar swing like myself, who like to whip into the ball, use a lot of hand speed and last second acceleration, I found myself to be a little bit slow or mistiming and mishitting. Alongside the stock form's balance, it was just a little bit harder to get around for my normal style swing, but I would actually attribute that to the forgiveness levels more so than the shape or maneuverability itself. But the shape just doesn't help the cause when it comes to this style of a swing. Now why I say the forgiveness levels is because the Percept 100 being the same racket with a more open pattern is that you'll find easier access to spin and higher levels of forgiveness off center which allows you to come at the ball from a few different angles where the 100D the sweet spot is a lot more concentrated so you don't have that leeway where it mostly rewards direct and flush contact. Adding a leather grip for handle weight greatly improved my experience but I still had to use my altered swing path to hit my best and cleanest. This is comparing to the Ezo 98 in all generations where I think it's a very handsy racket. Despite the thickness of the beam at 3 and 9, the thinner throat allows you to maneuver it around very fast in small spaces, which is more to my style and liking. The Vcore 98 sits right between both rackets where I think it excels the best where you have a clean and simplistic style stroke, valuing timing and efficiency. Now obviously I'm not saying this is a universal rule, at the end of the day it will come down to how skilled you are but I think you can find some level of commonality more often than not. So for control even though this is a 100 square inch racket I found the racket to be the most useful in these two types of shots. When you swing out and constantly attack this provides you with the most control and pinpoint accuracy. My favorite aspect of the control is that on high bouncing surfaces like hard and clay court the launch angle and linear trajectory can completely neutralize and tame the arc of the bounce if you attack aggressively. So being able to flatten out a ball even when it's out of your strike zone or you're trying to take it early and attack to take away time from the opponent is actually a pretty incredible feature in this rack which is something that I struggled a bit more of between the E zone and the V core line. I did mention with the power that you could attack aggressively over and over again with the high level of consistency and the racket is really not going to spray on you much at all as long as you're timing it correctly. The second type of shot that works really well is the ability to guide the ball in whatever direction you want. It feels almost effortless when you're taking someone else's pace and completely absorbing it. If you make clean contact with just a guiding stroke, it feels super smooth and very solid of contact, very minimal twisting when you hit clean, and you can use it offensively and defensively to great effect. If you're trying to just defend a ball, absorb the pace and get it back, or you want to redirect someone's pace to utilize it as a counter attack, is a very effective shot. 
where you have to be the most careful is the medium pace shots the slower rally balls because you have to be very conscious of clean contact making sure you still swing big not necessarily meaning that you have to hit hard but just ensuring that you don't cheat your stroke arming it cutting the stroke too short from its swing path because depth is not quite for free with the 100d if you don't actively go after the ball you'll find that it's very easy to hit short especially when you're having to defend but at the same time once you adjust to this racket get really used to it i think you will notice it less and less as you become accustomed to its nuances so for spin between the Percept 100 and 100D, I actually think the spin levels do not really differ all that much. They both can produce quite a lot of spin, especially with a shaped string where you can achieve some incredibly high bouncing balls when you hit it right. The difference is, is that the 100 will allow you a bit more freedom to access it throughout the string bed with a larger sweet spot, where the 100D wants a very flush and centered contact, but the results are virtually indistinguishable. The 100D's launch angle is definitely on the more controlled side which can be quite straight which is much less prevalent for the Percept 100. This is where string choice will play the most importance. Personally I liked a very aggressive shaped string for the 100D because you'll find that the 100D doesn't really easily grab the ball very well and why I did not mention the backhand maneuverability is because the one-handed swing was not really a problem at all. What was a struggle was aggressively spinning the backhand when you needed to because it much prefers a shot that drives through the court more than anything else since you need such solid contact in the center. The Percept 100 I didn't feel that this was much of an issue because of the extra forgiveness and access to a higher arc from the launching. The 100 will be more rewarding to play with a style that has more variety and the 100D will be more suitable to a flatter game and attacking playstyle. For the 100D, once I stopped trying to spin the ball as much as I normally would, choosing only to do so if the situational ball was correct, my overall experience of the racket started to turn the tide because in the beginning, trying to play the way I normally do, I was not enjoying it at all. Compared to the V-Core and E-Zone, I would say that they are not far off in terms of spin potential as you might think they are on paper. Sure, there are perhaps less rotations on the ball that allow it to aggressively dip, but I think you'll be surprised, especially with 100D, at how much spin you can actually get sometimes. But again, if you're looking for a mix of characteristics between the V-Core and the E-Zone with an enhanced level of control, maybe the Percept 100 might be the way to go. For serving, it's difficult to compare any racket to the ease of serving with rackets like the E-Zone and the v 98 because they flow so easily, move very fast and are user friendly when it comes to the stroke. However, if you're confident with your serve, maybe you need some time to adapt and adjust to the frame a little bit, the 100D is still very capable. I took a similar approach to my explanation of the different styles that I felt optimally suited all three rackets where the EZO 98 is so fast that you can use pure hand speed to generate the majority of your power and accuracy. The v 98 isn't as speedy as the E-Zone but it still moves quite fast. Like I said, an efficient but clean swing is what I found worked best while serving with it. Where my serve suits the ESO 98 by far, with the 100D, what I did was change the structure of my serve to incorporate more of my body weight and a bigger, longer swing style instead of relying on an instant acceleration with my hand. So I built up more momentum from my legs and arms, used that momentum to carry the weight of the racket and then threw my body into the serve. And this is where I hit the cleanest, the most powerful and the most accurate with the 100D. Once I started doing that, it produced a very heavy flat serve, even in stock form. I still hit all my spots and with the right strings, the kick serve does not feel like a glaring weakness as you might think with the closed pattern. Of course, adding weight helps with all of this requiring less overall effort, but it's no slouch in stock form. For the forgiveness levels, if I haven't really indicated enough already, the 100D is not the most forgiving of the frames we've been discussing. Is the sweet spot super small? Not exactly, but it's definitely smaller than you would ever expect a 100 to be because it's smaller than the E-Zone and the V-Core 98. So for someone who finds an error E-Zone or V-Core 98 unforgiving, you might not gel with this one. But if you're interested, give yourself time to adjust and I think you'll get the hang of it eventually. The exception is that if you hit very flat being your playstyle, making contact with 100D might come more naturally, but if you're predominantly a spin player, you have to find a way to make it work for you rather than the racket to work with you. 
when I tried to use thinner strings to open up the sweet spot and launch angle with vocal cyclone 1.15 millimeters, I could still string at 48 pounds with no problems as it opened up the string bed. But the biggest downside, it did not take long at all for the strings to lose a ton of tension. Although the sweet spot did open up, the launch angle was slightly higher. The tension was gone too fast and I lost a ton of control and struggled to keep the ball down just within one session alone. So if you want to string super low, maybe use a normal gauge and a more of a controlled string, or I would recommend don't go super low, just a few pounds lower, like four pounds, and let the string settle in over a short period of time to find a happy medium. For stability, aside from control, the second best characteristic of the racket is the stability, with a low swing weight of 319 for the one I got, which is about the average you would expect to get. I thought it played above its weight class and the problem was not the stability itself but that it was not as forgiving as a normal 100 you'd expect to be. If you do make clean contact returning fast serves, I was able to block them comfortably without the racket shaking really much at all and that's why also I mentioned in control that redirecting shots felt really nice. Blocking high pace balls works really well and is for sure a step above the E-Zone 98 and V-Core 98 in stock form. For the Percept 100 in stock, it was marginally less stable because it was a little bit lighter, but you can easily add that extra weight back onto the racket, just bumping it up 5 grams to bring it up to the stock specs of the 100D and you should be able to get fairly similar result. For the slice, I felt a little bit of a hit and miss, possibly due to the forgiveness levels of the racket. When you are set and balanced and you time it well, the slice mixes the stability and the denser string pattern. You can get a very clean shot that stays low and rips through the court. Where I found it a little bit more difficult was on the stretch, where you had to play a bit more defensively with the recovery slices. I was floating them a little bit more than I would like, either too long or too short. You need a higher level of concentration when making contact on the stretch due to the small sweet spot. It could just be a me thing, but the last thing I want to have to think about when I'm on the full stretch and defense is concentrating on perfect contact as I'm just looking to get the ball back. So in that sense, it might just be built for a better mover or generally a more advanced player. Finally, for volleys, volleys are pretty solid. It provides the combination of the characteristics of stability, feel, control, and maneuverability to give you a well-rounded experience when you're at the net. I didn't feel the sweet spot to be much of an issue for the volleys. Overall, a great experience for both singles and doubles play. And with extra weight added for the stability, I think it is a nice addition, but also not completely necessary either. So who is this record for? If you heard everyone else say how good the E-Zone and the V-Core 98 are, and you come to find out that you just didn't seem to like them at all, it could be very well likely that it just didn't suit your playstyle, and that the Percept 100 or the 100D, the shape, the way it moves, how they play, could just happen to be more maneuverable to the way you swing, more accessible to the way you play, and perhaps making it easier to hit. In that case, if you did form those opinions of the V-Core and the E-Zone, the Percept might fill that gap between what you're looking for. The playstyle I think that 100D suits is mostly an aggressive baseliner with an all-court game, a flatter game style, the precision of full swings is what you want to make the most of. But the nice amount of stability also will assist in defending when you need to, so it has that versatility, but that stability and maneuverability will also help you finish at the net as well. Perhaps for a more advanced player, this might be a well-rounded racket. Someone with great timing and footwork and a clean hitter who's not bothered by the more defined sweet spot could really maximize all aspects of this racket. The level of control compared to the E-Zone and the V-Core is a noticeable step above and the ability to neutralize high balls is a deadly option for someone who wants to take the balls early and finish off points as fast as possible. But this being a control racket doesn't trickle into the realm of being an all-out advanced player frame where you need to focus on every single move that you make because it's still got great power, access to heavy topspin and is pretty maneuverable for the right swing. Now if you like all the qualities of the 100D but want more forgiveness, a higher launch angle and easier access to spin, then the Percept 100 is essentially going to be the way to go. And at first I thought maybe I would like the 100 better, which is for sure easier to play with, but after playing with the 100D for a while, I think that perhaps the control is not something I necessarily want to skimp on. 
In terms of skill level, ideally I'd say no less than 4.0, probably more towards the 4.5 level or higher if you really want to get the most out of this racket. A UTR of maybe six and higher, but again, play style and suitability is king. My final thoughts, it's a bit difficult to compare the 100D to anything on the market that I can think of amongst the main brands. It's really in a unique category of its own because it's got that extra level of control that you would find in the Gravity and Speed Pro, but is more light and maneuverable, which edges towards rackets like the E-Zone and the v 98. It still holds a good amount of power potential that is a step above the Speed Pro, but is also the least forgiving out of all the rackets, inclusive of the v and E-Zone 98. But you also throw into the mix that at this swing weight and weight range is also one of the more stable rackets that you can find on the market. I played with the 100D for multiple sessions, multiple string setups, and I was near adamant that it just didn't suit the way I played. But as I started to adjust my game and adapt it more and more, I started to unlock its true potential and began to enjoy the racket way more. Again, why it's important for anyone to not make assumptions too fast about a racket and give it the proper time. Honestly, every single brand and every single product line has a good offering at the moment. Multiple, in fact. What started as a fairly mediocre opinion on the 100D has evolved and I think another solid offering and alternative for people to choose from the Yonex product ranges. Although the V-Core and the E-Zone do cross over in many playing characteristics, the Percept 100D adds another element of uniqueness that you will not find in other frames, which opens the door for people who don't want to go as far as the Percept 97 and 97D due to the extreme controlled nature and higher weight range, but didn't quite gel with the V-Core and E-Zone 98 for whatever reason. And these people are looking for a fine balance between the mixing of the, the controlled aspects of the Percept line and the user friendliness of the other two lines. In my opinion, overall, a nice addition to the market. That concludes my review. Check out my racket ratings at the end of the video to see the comparisons between the Percept 100D, the 100, the Vico 98, and the Ezo 98. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.